to take an opportunity to eat. introduce the guest for the day mr ramkat desai sir i thank you sir behalf of the sheshadri puram institute of management studies for accepting our invitation to address the students sir is a chairperson and management consultant in assocham karnataka healthcare initiative and a convener bangalore fintech firm ramkant sir is a bangalore based executive with over 34 years experience in it industries and he held many senior management roles in companies like happiest minds technologies and wipro sir contributed in various other indian it service companies and incubated many startup startups and managed strategic acquisition and pursued revenue goals of 700 millions and managed strategic customer relationship more more than 100 million in revenue for wipro and his experience includes managing strategic deals global service operations and e business solution and software development center for global customers sir has also consultant services go global customers in outsourcing initiatives and isit initiatives and setting up for offshore development centers i would request mr ramkan sir to enlighten the student with your precious words yeah hi uh, good morning everybody first of all <clears throat> i would like to thank the college for taking the initiative to invite me to share some of the perspectives i may have in this journey um productions operation manager i i also thank the faculty who have been in touch with me to to make this happen okay um the topic production and operations management is a vast topic okay i mean it it just cannot be covered in uh, 45 minutes or half an hour because people take almost 20 years 25 years to specialize in these areas and then you know provide advanced insights so um uh, i must admit up front that i'll be limited in my knowledge beyond a point okay to share uh um, uh the uh, production operation management perspectives across industries okay but having said that uh, i would like this uh, uh, session to be more interactive uh, your faculty has shared few questions with me and uh, you know i'll give some initial introduction and then we'll quickly move on to the uh, uh, your question and answer session let it be more interactive that would be more lot more uh productive and useful to you than a monologue lecture from me okay uh, in this area so i'll just give a brief introduction to production operations management it's not that uh, you are not aware most of you are uh, um, are mba students and hence you know what is production operations management it essentially is around um, planning organizing supervision uh 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 activities in the context of production in the context of manufacturing and in the context of services this is broadly the productions and operations management right and operations management obviously obviously involves uh, not only the production aspects in a in a in a shop floor but it also involves procurement resource planning it also involves optimization of the process it also involves Mm, you know service management service management optimization the total quality control ability to understand uh, customers needs product design okay uh, and uh, uh, product strategy so i mean it it's, it's as i told you it's it's a wide uh, encompassing uh, subject okay but i will just leave you with some data points um, you know, for example the global manufacturing industry will be at least the outsourcing aspects okay will be around about 350 to 400 billion dollars okay and in just industry 4.0 which is catching up now it is going to be 120 billion dollars okay and india uh, for whatever reason unfortunately we have not been able to um, uh, catch the uh, manufacturing wave as china and other countries like vietnam have captured okay um, when lot of outsourcing was happening over the last 30 35 years a, a, some of manufacturing outsourcing we are not uh, picked up whereas in it outsourcing 
you know, India has made significant progress. For example, the entire IT industry in India in 1990 was approximately say $100 million, not more than that. Today it is $150 billion. Okay. And in, so that means it has grown almost thousand times from 1990 to 2020. In 30 years, the, in the IT industry has grown 30 times. Whereas the manufacturing outsourcing industry has not grown that much. Okay. Globally, manufacturing industry is a, is a much bigger market than, um, than IT. Okay. But anyhow, uh, having said that, today, if you look at Indian economy, which is around about, say, $3 trillion, uh, the manufacturing uh, uh, contributes to somewhere around 18 to 20%. Okay. But India's GDP doesn't capture the uh, output of many SMEs very accurately uh, because a lot of them don't uh, publish their uh, work uh, uh, to the tax authorities or to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the MCA in the way it should be published. So uh, leaving margin for that, there would be another 8 to 9% which is not reported properly. So we can comfortably say that at least 25% of India's economy comes from manufacturing, which is like uh, approximately $750 million, which is very small for a country of 1.3 billion, 1 billion people. Okay. So um, any of be that as may be, one thing you should understand is that production and operation management is a horizontal area. It is not a vertical area. What is the difference between which cuts across industries is called a horizontal area okay anything which is in a focused in a industry in a particular industry it's called vertical area for example if you take uh, 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 banking and financial services lending is a vertical area because it is only related to banks whereas if you take it it cuts across banks it cuts across manufacturing industries it cuts across many other places so from that perspective, my production operation planning uh, is a horizontal area. It cuts across automotive. Automotive is a leading uh, uh, sector, obviously, followed by chemicals, followed by healthcare. Healthcare, a lot of medical device manufacturing is there. For example, in healthcare, in India, India, the uh, ma medical device market, uh, uh, which is a lot of medical devices, which are procured by uh, various hospitals and diagnostic labs, is approximately $70 billion, okay? I'm sure all of you know what is the billion dollar to crores conversion. It is $1 billion is approximately 7,500 crores, okay? So if you are talking about 70, $75 billion of medical device manufacturing, it is around about, uh, you know, 70 into seven, whatever is that number, 7,000, whatever is that number translates to 50,000 crores or whatever it is of medical devices alone, out of which hardly India produces just nine to $10 billion. That means $60 billion worth of medical devices we are importing, which is pretty huge. You know, I was reading in Academic Times today, just on mobile displays, not only mobile TV displays and semiconductors, okay, India is going to import 80 to $100 billion worth of uh, 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 equipment over the next three to four years. I mean, imagine if India were to produce those uh, those eighty billion dollars worth of uh, displays and semiconductors. You know, uh, the amount of jobs we can create and the amount of uh, uh, import bill we can save is very huge. Okay, anyhow, coming back to production operations plan, uh, planning again. Okay, it cuts across many verticals. It cuts across automotive, chemical, healthcare, food beverage, consumer goods, consumer goods like soaps. You know. Mm, whatever it is, what all we consume, okay, aerospace and defense, of course, okay, and uh, industrial equipment and many others, okay, in pharma, etc. Et so if you look at what are the critical areas in a, in, in a POM schedule, okay, if you look at the entire value chain, okay, procurement is one big function, managing the inventory which you procure, because if you procure too much inventory, you will, you will be investing too much capital, okay. Um, I'm presuming all of you understand some of these basic terminology very comfortably. So I'm not going to define every term like, you know, what is the, you know, capital cost and what is the, you know, operations cost, blah, 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 and all of that. Okay. I presume uh, most of the fundamentals have been learned through the course. Okay. So, you know, procuring inventory, how much inventory to maintain, what is the right inventory level, 
okay uh, uh, how do you how do you source the labor how do you train the labor what is the labor management and what is the kind of manufacturing execution systems use and what is the kind of process uh, production and uh, intelligent process uh, uh, automation okay and what is the quality process management you have uh, uh, apart from planning scheduling dispatching packaging all of these are integral functions of the of the of the production operations manager nowadays industry 4.0 is picking up quite a bit i'll talk a little bit about in industry 4.0 as well okay uh, mm, uh, this entire thing all these functions are applicable even for a small organization or for a or for a large organization in a large organization the number of parts parts being manufactured and the parts being integrated may be higher in a small organization maybe they might be limited to one part or one product or whatever it is okay and some of the mm, uh, latest trends are essentially around how do you plan capacity expansion how do you plan for the uh, plant tender out because most of the plants would have become legacy in technology so if you have to or it may be operating at a lower efficiency than uh, uh, most more, more modern plants so how do you turn around the plant and uh, quite a few people are also acquiring plants okay uh, so uh, mergers and acquisitions you know some of these things are are uh, are uh, uh, some of the more newer business areas in this in this area and uh, uh, some from a technology perspective what is happening is iot is internet of things is catching up in a big way robotic process automation robotics factory automation is 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 picking up quite a bit and it and iot convergence is driving uh, factory automation quite a bit so the factory of tomorrow will be completely different from the factory of yesterday okay it will be leveraging uh, 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 digital technologies okay and a uh, uh, lot of uh, large plants already use uh, some form of enterprise resource planning software you know plm software supply chain management software warehouse management software and things like that but the newer things which are being added are decision support systems you know um, production planning systems business intelligence e integration with e-commerce you know etc etc okay and uh, 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 the newer professionals will have to will also have to understand what it means to interact with the dealers dealer management systems okay regulatory aspects especially in the chemical industry and process industry and in the and in the and in the pharmaceutical industry what are the various regulations which are there okay so so many things are evolving in in the entire scope of the industry okay uh, and it varies by industry uh, processes involved are very important the manufacturing process it varies again by industry okay and uh, staging and shifting to production the r and d innovation aspects so uh, it is it is you know uh, uh, it is evolving at a quite a breakneck speed and uh, the entire market is growing around 12 to 14% per annum okay now if you look at just industry 4.0 which is essentially around newer technologies of artificial intelligence iot robotics you know plant automation uh, mobility etc etc being introduced into the into the factory okay the market size is approximately 100 billion plus okay so i strongly suggest since most of you are professionals of tomorrow you should pick up industry 4.0 terminology and also some of the things uh, like virtual uh, virtual 3d how vr and ar is going to be used uh, you know a lot of disruption is happening in the value chain real time location systems etc etc okay so i mean uh, just to summarize uh, uh, some of the latest trends are essentially a logistics operational analytics reverse logistics e commerce service management okay production planning okay and uh, 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 project management software of course okay uh, uh, you know things like that advanced planning uh, and scheduling the health and safety aspects okay automation aspects demand responsiveness that means how responsive can the factory be uh, uh, for a, a changing customer need okay and automating repetitive processes okay uh, streamlining the communication in the shop floor with the dealers with the customers with the procurement teams okay uh, things like that i mean integrating disparate both information systems as well as streamlining the value chain so that the inventory turnover time is faster and things like that 
and some of the newer technology terms like enterprise data okay and uh, 3d printing etc etc is happening from a business model perspective the b2b is shifting to b2c now typically a, a large organization used to uh, uh, supply through dealers but nowadays with e-commerce uh, uh, factory to customer is evolving quite a bit okay so it's like direct benefit transfer it's like you know direct shift to customer kind of a concept so i think these are some of the things which are uh, emerging in the marketplace <laughs> so the questions in your mind would be hey for a budding professional like me what could be the opportunities okay uh, first of all opportunities are plenty okay indian market is growing indian economy is growing the fastest almost 9% per annum this year we will be uh, uh, recording highest gdp growth in the world okay uh, uh, post pandemic recovery has been the best thanks to vaccination um, efforts by the both the central government and various state governments okay i think if if omicron doesn't hurt us beyond a point uh, uh, i think uh, our economy should grow at 9% plus okay and it should continue around 7 to 7.5 or at least 6.5 to 7.5 over the next 3 to 5 years i don't see any reason which which should not happen and and with the kind of various schemes announced by government of india like uh, production linked incentive scheme lowering of taxes okay uh, for export oriented manufacturing industries etc etc okay i think the, the 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 private the private investment and the fdi should pick up in the manufacturing space and hence i see a lot of bright future so what could be the roles you know uh, you can get into obviously you have to be trained on the shop floor you know shop floor has many areas like plant manager procurement manager process implementer inventory control management delivery and returns purchase management supply chain management facilities management you know i mean you can name the courses there are hell of a lot of uh, you know courses in health and safety you know etc etc so i would like to stop here okay i know i spoke uh, almost non stop at a breakneck speed but uh, you know i would like to take more questions as we go through the journey now okay yes uh, students you can ask a question sir good morning sir hi morning sir what are the opportunities is there for mba students sir because i am getting negative negative views from various sources and they are telling operation production only for btech students and okay you know that is not a, a, a correct assumption okay um see production operations management it is true that btech students are preferred okay no question about it okay because they have the uh, especially the mechanical metallurgy industrial automation or production operation management people who do btech in that may be preferred okay but uh, the, if you look at the entire production operation planning value chain okay it the production actual production which where the engineering helps is only 15% of it okay 15 to 20% the rest of the areas whether you call it procurement inventory control decision support systems you know uh, supply chain management uh, or service management they are all non engineering areas okay and uh, the 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 btech background is not mandatory okay out there it is just people with good analytical skills and basic commerce and good knowledge of the of the of the customer needs and and the production needs etc etc i think they are going to shine let us take a typical it industry okay now it industry has got a lot of mbas do all of them have done computer science answer is no okay did all of them uh, go through a btech electronics course course answer is no IT industry because the demand was high, they took lot of people from other branches, not only uh, uh, other courses, okay, other branches like mechanical and metallurgy. They trained them, put them on the jobs, okay. In in uh, but they also took lot of BComs and MBAs and then uh, utilized them. So 
compared to an IT job in a, in a production shop floor control operations management kind of a thing, the number of people who need to have a basic degree in engineering is not more than 20%. Okay. So that is uh, not a, and especially with more, uh, see, you, you look at the entire shop floor, it is getting automated now. Okay. Uh, process optimization is, is getting automated. Okay. So the scope, whatever is the engineering skill, it is getting automated quite a bit. Okay. A lot of tools are coming into the place. Okay. So from that perspective, especially with e-commerce, you know, supply chain procurement, you know, those, those areas are a lot more critical in a, in a, in a, in a, in a production operations management kind of a scenario. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Next question. Yes, having said that, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, repeating myself for the previous question. Having said that, non BTEC students should pick up the terminology. Okay. They should understand what it means. Okay. You can't just say that, hey, I'm a BCOM student, I will not understand what is IoT. You have to understand what is Internet of Things. Okay, you have to understand, uh, uh, you know, what is ERP. You have to understand what is product lifecycle management. Okay, so you have to get into some of those things and you learn on the job. Okay, even a BTEC student will not have much uh, appreciation for these things. Okay, so he also has to learn, and you also have to learn. He just has probably, you know, some uh, six months advantage over you in understanding these terminology. That's all. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Understand, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, having said uh, now, uh, uh, in the companies, uh, they prefer a lot of certifications program in all the specialization. Suppose I like example of if I take a finance as MBA, they will look into whether I have uh, secured the NCFM and ASM certifications like that. So is it so, uh, is the same thing scenario in the production and operations where students have to get some certification courses? Um, you know, it depends upon the amount of uh, depth to which they have gone through in their MBA course, okay? If production operation management uh, has been covered say over five, four or five electives, okay? Then that is not enough. Okay, uh, they have to uh, understand some of the areas, especially like supply chain management in a little bit more depth. Okay, so obviously certificate or manufacturing execution systems, you know, some of these things, uh, uh, you know, they have to uh, get, it helps, definitely it helps. Okay, on, on advanced planning and scheduling, you know, or health and safety aspects, you know, some of these areas will definitely help. Okay. Um, now, uh, there are a lot of, uh, I would suggest that people uh, look at uh, courses being offered by ISB or IIM Bangalore or, you know, some of these or even online courses are there from Purdue University, Coursera, Udemy and all that. And pick what are the areas in which they want to specialize in and pick up some of those certifications if, 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 if they want, okay. But if they have done their BTEC very well, if they have done their MBA very well and those courses well, it may not be needed. Some of it could be repetition, but at least IAM and ISB will give a brand value, if not anything else. And uh, in Bombay, there is one Wellingkar Institute of Management. They also do a lot of production supply chain management courses. Okay, I think people can look up and then you know figure it out, okay? Uh, Offlight digital operations management is picking up quite a bit, okay. And uh, uh, product strategy courses are picking up quite a bit, okay. So those areas like reverse logistics, okay. A lot of people don't understand what is reverse logistics. So if there are uh, some courses like operational analytics, analytics is a big thing, okay. Intersection of technology and production operations management, okay. Those are some of the areas where you should look for certifications. Okay, IoT, uh, 3D printing, virtual reality and uh, automated reality, VR and AR, and how production floor is changing with impact of some of these technologies, you know, um, location specific systems, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Thank you, sir. Any other yep. questions, students?
what is i i'm i'm looking at the questions here so let me answer it okay i think one two three four questions are over fifth question what is the progression of pom in the next 10 years okay i kind of answered it already okay over the next 10 years at least in india the the uh, factory is going to be more automated in fact recently i wrote an article on what is called as industry 4.0 okay i'll share that article with you guys okay uh what does it mean okay for example uh, uh i'll read out probably the first two three paragraphs of that article okay and then uh, i will tell you what will happen okay um just one minute let me open that what is industry 4.0 it says essentially digital transformation of the manufacturing production and related industries and value creation process industry 4.0 is interchangeably used along with fourth industrial revolution okay the term 4.0 has percolated into many other areas like construction 4.0 logistics 4.0 energy 4.0 etc etc so as indian economy is planning to capture substantial portion of the manufacturing outsourcing and enhance the make in india program government has to enable both the policy level and the investment level the key enablers for the growth of industry 4.0 so tomorrow's factory will be completely different as mass manufacturing has started gaining momentum future factory will be powered by digital technologies industrial automation integration of new technologies such as rfid iot blockchain manufacturing execution systems data leveraged process automation and process intelligent cloud based supply chain management and warehouse management systems and logistic management will drive the digital supply chain of tomorrow the global manufacturing industry will be at least 350 billion dollars and industry 4.0 alone will be 110 billion dollars okay we'll not get into beyond this but i briefly touched upon how the technology is going to impact uh, how industry 4.0 is taking off in a big way okay and industry 4.0 of course europe has made much faster progress in industry 4.0 europe us japan and, uh, and china particularly germany and japan have made significant progress in industry 4.0 i think india has to catch up quite a bit fiki has done some research uh, federation of indian chamber of commerce has done some research they are working with government of india to enable a complete policy framework for industry 4.0 okay and uh, some of the state governments also have started taking initiatives uh, from that perspective i see if all of you uh, understand the broader perspective specialize in one area over the next 5 years and start broad basing your knowledge across other areas as well so it has the learning has to be a t model depth in an area and t is you know depth in an area and breadth across okay i think that is how the learning model has to be okay so if if you develop your talent uh, uh, along that pick an area whichever you like and and start specializing in that and then grow into other areas in and around production operations management as i told you there are at least 10 15 areas within that space okay and i don't see any reason why uh, your career should not grow over the next 10 15 years okay um yeah uh, some of the repetitive jobs are getting automated so who will lose jobs some of the factory workers may lose jobs but they have to be retrained they have to be retrained and they have to learn a faster manufacturing process using the tools okay that doesn't mean that uh, the, the 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 factory jobs utility is gone it just that instead of employing five people maybe a, a, a shop floor may employ three factory workers okay or it, it may reduce the number of factory workers by 20 30% but there are any or repetitive jobs okay but then since the scope of manufacturing expands uh, the number of people who get employed will be more okay okay and the next question was uh, whenever we talk about pio specialization with commerce background they are saying that only be with pio specialization are preferred please clarify i think this i clarified already okay uh, uh, the 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 factory of future will be different 
A B-Tech fellow will not have so much exposure to digital technology. He will not have so much exposure to 3D printing. He will not have so much of exposure to IoT. They are all new areas. Supply chain management, he will not have any exposure, okay? Dealer management, inventory management, inter inter inventory turnover, advanced packaging modules. I don't think he will have any exposure. So I think most of you are, 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 are kind of equally equipped to get into these jobs. <laughs> Any other questions, students? I think the first question will always be difficult. Nobody is going to get you. Please ask openly. Okay. This is at best a knowledge exchange session. Okay, you are just interacting with your father, like our uncle, you know, who has spent a little bit, who was just unlucky to be born 30 years before you were born. That's all that he has. Basically, uh, they started with the very beginning form specializations or one week or 10 days before. So they had all these doubts. So I just wanted to have a uh, check with the industry people. So I connected with you. So thank you, sir, for uh, actually giving a lot of uh, inputs to our students and for ourselves as well. Uh, now I request uh, Rahul H to give a vote of thanks. Yeah, I hope it was uh, informative. Okay, I hope the students enjoyed it. I would have really loved if they had a couple of questions before we closed it. Okay, yeah. Any other questions, students? Hello. Yeah, sir, you ahead, to... yeah, go ahead, Amrita. Please. Uh, sir, uh, just you mentioned about industry readiness, how it should, uh, it should be prepared. So, in factory, they may lose the job if they're not doing this. Can you so, put your really question cool. in chat session? Your voice is breaking, Amrita. Can you please put your question in chat, chat so that I can see it? Your voice is breaking quite a bit, Amrita. Any questions you can post it in the chat box if at all you are not willing to ask here. Hi, Amrita. I, I guess uh, it got disconnected, sir. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. If there are any other questions, uh, please feel free to ask. We'll just close in a minute or two, and then you know we'll go with the rest of the program. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah, some Babu Prasad is asking. Go ahead, Babu. Yeah, I think the, the job roles uh, which you can expect are, you know, various roles, which I told you, inventory management, inventory manager, procurement manager, shop floor manager, okay, uh, customer service manager, okay, or they initially may not be the manager, okay, you will be an executive, obviously, okay, after five to eight years experience, you will start becoming a manager, okay, uh, labor management, okay. These are all some of the typical, uh, um, you know, shop floor jobs which are there. Okay, process implementer. Okay, or returns manager. You know, things like that. Okay, or HR manager. Supply chain management is a big, big area. Okay, facilities management, quality management. Okay, uh, you know, these are all some of the areas. Or planning and scheduling manager. Okay, these are all various areas which uh, logistics also, to a certain extent, comes under uh, production operation management. Uh, um, but sometimes, unfortunately, most of the organizations treat logistics most as an administrative job. They don't treat it as a professional management job. Okay, uh, but logistics 
per se, if you get into logistics companies, okay, there are a lot of jobs uh, which are there for the production operation professionals as well. Logistics comes towards the end of the value chain, okay. So logistics planning is a big area within the uh, production operations planning, uh, not logistics execution. Logistics execution is slightly different. Logistics planning essentially uh, both for returns as well as for supply chain. And with e-commerce, logistics is getting more and more integrated with the production as well, okay? E-commerce is driving the integration quite a bit, yep. See, once you finish your course and once you get into the industry, okay? Industry dynamics dictate your roles, okay? Industry decides, suppose you, you get into a, a chemical company, okay? The health and safety management becomes a high priority area or pharma company, okay? If you get into a pharma, regulations play a major role, okay? And obviously the, the, there are a lot of other things, okay? Pharma research plays a major role. Uh, there is obviously there are functions like procurement, blah, 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 and all of that, okay? Whereas if you get into a typical automotive manufacturing, okay, it is it's more of an assembly, assembly management, production shop floor management becomes a lot more important. So sometimes the nature of jobs and the importance of jobs of each of these roles varies with the nature of industry, okay? Uh, that's what, if you, suppose you join a, uh, uh, not you, I'm just talking about a general thing. Suppose the HR MBA is there, he joins a bank, Okay, his role will be limited to managing bank employees or whatever it is. Whereas suppose the civil HR person joins an IT company. Imagine the number of employees he has to address the HR issue. His role becomes extremely critical. Okay, so things like that. So the professional skill which you bring to the table, the importance or application of that skill varies with the nature of job you are going to get into, right? Sir, uh, how about uh, this retail sector now? I, I have heard uh, many operations managers are uh, being hired, operation executive and operations managers are being hired. So I have seen uh, many MBA graduates also there. So there, there also there is a lot of opportunities, I feel, uh, for MBA pump specialization, yeah. especially uh, operations. In retail, uh, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. In retail warehouse management, uh, 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 the way you display the merchandise, okay? Uh, what goes on the shelf? Shelf planning is a big area, okay? What goes on the shelf? On which days, uh, uh, how the shelf is managed? Okay, how do you understand the consumer preferences? What is the hot product of the year? Okay, uh, so consumer uh, uh, consumption uh, uh, analytics, consumer analytics become, and customer experience and consumer experience become, say, uh, uh, a, a key area in retail, okay? So from that perspective in retail, it is more of shelf planning and, you know, uh, merchandising, you know, some of those areas get, get importance, okay? So they are, they are definitely uh, uh, shop floor planning people or production uh, operations management people are preferred quite a bit in the retail sector as well. As uh, Amruta ma'am was asking, sir, that question, she got disconnected. Uh, will managers level will be affected by industry 4.0, uh, which will be implemented in future in India? I guess uh, you have clarified only factory people will be uh, affected uh, uh, in this 4.0 uh, or any middle level uh, employees also will be affected. See, uh, um, I would I would see it like this, you know, uh, uh, auto rickshaws have come, cycle rickshaws have gone. Right, have cycle rickshaw jobs have been lost. You know, majority of them got converted to auto rickshaw jobs. Okay, uh, auto <laughs> taxis have come, have auto rickshaw jobs didn't go on. Yeah, some of them, majority of them converted themselves to call taxi drivers. Okay, so that is how I see the progression of the industry as the industry automates more and more. Okay, uh, the need for a higher level of expertise becomes more and a repetitive job. Okay. Uh, always will be at a uh, at a risk. 
okay any anything which is repetitive is all so i don't know how many of you seen a uh, robot cleaning the floors these days okay if you buy one such robot which cleans the floor you know your maid's job is at stake right obviously you have no choice right the washing machine has come and uh, the dobby's job has got converted right he has just become more a pressing fellow than a job than a real dobby in in that sense of the word okay but i mean uh, unfortunately that is the nature of you know capitalistic economy okay uh, but we can't live in yesterday's world but i i know her question was not from a socialistic perspective her question was more which is the job which is going to be affected i think uh, the the factory workers jobs are at a slightly higher uh, risk compared to a, a, a management executive's job but um, i think the nature of shop floor jobs also will change any other questions students group sir has given a uh, lot of input uh, thank you for giving your valuable time sir uh, now i request uh, rahul h to give a word of thanks for the today's session good morning all i'm rahul h i sincerely thank ramnath desai sir for giving such a valuable input about production operation its large capacity that's coming up in indian and world market I also thank our faculties for taking such an effort to bring such experts to share knowledge. Such sessions are always an eye opener to us. I really thank Ramnath Ram Kanthe Sai sir, Deshmi ma'am, and all other faculty and students for cooperating in this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Amulya ji. Thanks the faculty and thank you students. Wishing you all the best. Thank you so much for uh, for your time, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. students i guess uh, you got a lot of inputs uh, what is expected and what is there in uh, future ahead hope uh, your doubts regarding the production and operations management is clarified if at all anything is there you can get in touch with us and we'll clarify the further things okay thank you so much for patiently attending this session so i will sign off